it's November 9th and we're back at the jetties. So far, it's just these little yellow mouth trout. I got old buddy Nick with me here. We're gonna look for those drum that I just caught in the last video. But being that it's Jacksonville, you know, those fish could be long gone by now. But uh, we're gonna give it a shot. What we're doing right now is just throwing some jigs and shrimp up to the jetty rocks. A little 3 8 ounce lead head with some shrimp on it. Alright, Nick caught the first redfish. He ain't gonna make it. He ain't gonna be no 18 inches. He just shat on me. Dave, what a big one. Well, I think I got a redfish. On the fairy wand. Yeah, I think he might be a keeper. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think we got a keeper red bass. Boy, I'll tell you. That sure has been a long time since I've had any keepers. Dead shrimp on a jig head. It don't get no more rudimentary than just that. It's a lucky day. I never get keepers. That's a 28 inch. Nick's got a big one on. Get him out, get him out, get him out. He's gonna go around the boat. He's got him underneath the boat. And Nick's fishing the ultimate fairy wand. One of my old G. Loomis rods that is an absolute buggy whip. Look at that rod. We need a keeper on that. Ah! Yes, sir! Twenty-eight and a half inches long. Perfect. Perfect non-keeper. What are we going to do? doesn't make sense. You either catch them too small or too big. So, <clears throat> that's the reason we like black drum. 14, 24 inches. Put them in the box. Screw these reds. Right, no more jetties for us. We're in a different area. If you're local, you could probably figure out where we're at. Sitting in a whopping six foot of water. The croakers were killing us at the jetties, and all the red fish were too big, so we left. And the croakers were eating us out of house and home. So, we come up here, and we're getting some of these. This is the first good size one that we've gotten sitting up here in a shallow. Pegging our float rigs. Drop him in there. Picking our float rigs pegging them all the way so we can fish real shallow. We've caught a bunch of uh, small redfish so far, a couple small trout, and then that, that trout right there is the first good size one. So, we'll see what happens. Okay, Nikolai's got one on. It's a little pup red bass. Sure, it's true. Yeah, that's a little, it's a little pup redfish. More redfish that we're not allowed to keep. I'd take his sides off so fast, make your head spin. <laughs> That's just like catching a big ass croaker. That's a sandwich? I'd make him like into a fried sandwich so quick. Okay, Nick's got another guess what? Yes, folks, all these redfish, and we don't have a single redfish in the cooler. Wow, that thing is, look, wow, that thing's freaking huge, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Boy, you're catching one after another over there. Oh. Got another one. Oh, look at that nice trout. Oh, no. Come on, come on, come on. I told him, I told him, be careful. Don't be jerking around because you might catch a nice trout. There you go. There's a nice trout. It is, too. Yes. 
can't treat them all like they're stupid little pupper, pupper redfish. You get used to them, don't you? I know. Don't get too used to them. Look at that nice trout. Now, I had a fish on. And guess what? I still have them on. Man. I'm still goofing around with you. Now, I got a pupper or something here. Oh, I got a drum. I win a grape. We were having who catches the first drum? Oh, who catches the first drum and gets some grapes? Come on now. I got them. So uh, I get I get my, I get to eat my own grapes. So they are here. They're here. Nick didn't believe me that they're here. But there you go. Keeper trout. Want to measure them just in case? Uh yeah. Should I measure my drum? You think? Should I measure my drum to see if he's legal? They sure are kind of pretty when they're small. 16. 16 inch are good. Nice trout are up in here right now. They're so nice when they're little. Okay. What are you doing? I mean, we're going to add him to the box and we're going to have a whopping four trout. Woohoo! All these damn redfish we're having to throw away. Ridiculous. I just talked to a girl the other day, the fisheries chick that I told you that was. Yeah. She, oh, I hear that all the time. We've been beating up the same size redfish Why for do you 30 think you years. Hear it all the time? Yeah, because everybody's <laughs> pissed. The same redfish were beaten up for 30 years, 18 to 27 inches. 18 to 27 inches. Why don't you make it 22 to 30 inches? One per person, per day, that's it. Do that for four years, maybe five, and then change it to whatever else you want. But give us a shot. It's like this red snapper bullshit. They're calling red snapper, oh, it's a red snapper season. Oh, a Friday, Saturday, a Sunday? Week. And then the next week you get a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when it's blowing gale force winds. I mean, who are these idiots that are running the show? Okay, Nick. Nick wins. Yeehaw. He wins because my drum, he would not believe that there's drum in here. And I told him, there be drum in here. This is what we were fishing for at the jetties and we never caught a single one. There be drum in them their channels. There be drum. Okay, you got him? See? He didn't want to believe me. Why? Why do people never believe their fishing guide? They have to... I said... I don't catch a bunch of sheep's head in here, but I have. Mostly drum, flounder, reds, and trout. And there's one right there, folks! Doing the old flute rig is a, kind of a popping corking thing. Yeah, it's a pupper red, I think. Yep. Whoa, good Palm Beach release. <laughs> Palm Beach release. See, all we're doing on our... You know, that's the magic about a float rig. The total magic. I've got, I don't know, let's see, 500, almost 600 videos, right? And so many of them are using the float rig. And this is it. Right here is a stopper knot. Okay. It slides up and down. Nick wants me to teach him how to make that knot. It's a 20 pound motto on braid. Then you got a bead. Okay, then you got a bead. Then I got my float. Then down here, I put another bead. I make a big fat knot. I double my line. And the reason I do that is just so I can. No. So I can split that and put it on my reel handle for storage. Then down here is a sinker. We're using two ounce, you don't need to. Two ounces is the overall depth. You can use it 50 feet or five feet. And then a short leader. So when we call it pegging, you drop your stopper knot. Now it's like a pop and cork with a weight that you can really cast a country mile. And then a little short leader because you're keeping your bait right off the bottom. We're fishing in what, three feet? Oh yeah. I mean, what, what is it right now? Okay, we're in six where the boat sits, but there's a hump behind us. It's the most versatile. Uh, <laughs> this is. Weapon. I mean, and when you're in current, yeah, if it's drifting too fast, then you'll never get a bite. So you always want a. If you're walking down the street in a sidewalk, talking to a 
friend of yours. And as you're walking, that's the speed that you want your float to go. Anything faster than that is too fast. But look at here, we're up in shallow water with nothing but basically the wind blowing our float around and we're catching one of the fish after another. Yeah, now I love using popping corks up here because I love going, you know, all that stuff. But you could do this, you could take this thing and jerk it to the side, it'll splash water. And that's all we're doing. No? Give me a shrimp. <laughs> All right, talk about a little variety, and this is happening ever since the hurricane. Kind of makes me feel like we're in Louisiana. I'm up here. We're catching the pup reds one after another, a couple trout, and then I pull up a freshwater catfish. I've caught these in the river up to about, yeah, maybe four or five pounds. So he doesn't know where he's at because normally this would be very salty water up here. But it's not salty water now. Definitely different than a saltwater cat. Just to look at him, totally different. Gonna show me how to do this stuff or not? Sure. Yeah, I'll do. It. Let me get rid of this first. You mean your how many pup reds? Okay, Nick wants to know how do you make the stop or not on your float rig? Well, on braid, it's like super duper easy because. This is 20 pound mono and it bites in to the braid really good. And you always leave tags sticking out like, like these tag ends sticking out. So you can always go in here, tighten it, give it a little yank and it tightens it back up. And this would even work for most of the freshwater guys that, let's say you're Carolina rigging a rubber worm and of course you need a stop or not and maybe a bead and then have your bullet weight go down here and then down here you might have even on braid you might be tied straight to a worm hook and then you got your rubber worm or something let me get a piece of the red mono or yeah cut me a piece of the red I mean you can't of course fish a slip float unless you have a stop or not and you can buy those little packages they're a little yellow yarn, and everybody's like, oh, I got, oh, I got to get these. No, you don't. If you don't have 20-pound mono, we're using 20-pound mono here in and around oyster beds for our leader. So you got 20-pound mono. But I'm going to use this 50 because I'm going to hope you can see it better. So, Nick, hold the line right here. Hold it tight. One end. The easiest thing to do is you start off with a piece of 20 pound mono and it's always going to be curly coming off the spool. So what you do is I put it around, okay, you know, I got to do this like I always do it. You put it around your braid, okay, now let me do this as if it's a little, sh let me do it a little shorter here, okay. So I take it. You just don't put it around your braid like a hoop. You put it around your braid, around it like it is a hoop, like that, but you're holding it, okay? And I always take it and I put right where the connection is where I'm holding the two, here's an end, here's an end, okay? And I pull that relatively small and everybody might have their own way of doing this. And I loop around my line Okay, I go around my line and I go through the hole, the loop, and around my line, go around through the loop, and I do that. On 20 pound, I'll do it maybe four times. And now, all that is, is if you can see, it's a bunch of twists around the braid, but through the loop. And I'm actually probably making this way more complicated than it is. Okay? And then just pull it super tight and get it snugged on there and it'll make a little ball and then you go in there you always leave your tag ends a little bit long okay and now <coughs> that is really on there okay and it actually works better with the thinner the braid thinner the mono you have 
So that's pretty much the stopper nut. When it breaks or falls off, you just tie in another one. You know, there's those little tubes, and they have that little yellow yarn on it, and you slide it up there. That's for rookies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, you don't need all that. And, you know, we're using bait casters. We're actually using, right now, today, just throwing the floats. We're using my Japanese domestic market Super Dynamic S. Uh, pretty large, low profile bait casters. And it goes, that stopper knot, I could be fishing this really long. And that stopper knot with the tag ends will go right through that hole, go right on your spool. When you pitch it out, the inertia takes it right out so it can go in and out of your spool. Now remember, if you're float rig fishing and you're using spinning gear, that's the antichrist. Let's put it this way, there's things that are tradition. And tradition is, in Northeast Florida, Southeast Georgia, okay, and even maybe up into the Carolinas, Float rigging is done on bait casting. Why? I'll tell you. Because you're drifting your float out and you can push the button and the current will just take that float off your spool. You got your hand, your thumb right there. Your float goes down just like ours has been doing. Got a little pup red on. You go bam and you reel in the fish. Here you are with your spinning, your spinner. You got your bail open and it's drifting out and what are you going to do sit there and flake each little spool off line off your spool because when you do just let it go you have no way of controlling that line as it's paying off so you're going to have to flip that bail and reel and what do you got you got a belly of line from holy hell and back that the wind's been blowing on it just doesn't work right. So that's your little tech tip for today is how to make that little stop or not. And I'm telling you, there's some diehard flute riggers out there and they don't know how to make a simple stop or not that will. And I'll tell you, it's all the much better. I know guys use, they might use mono and then they use a little tiny rubber band and things like that. There's ways of doing it. But on braid, a piece of 20 pound mono is all you ever need. All right, well, I think we're gonna bag it because we still got fish to clean. And it's getting kind of late. So we're gonna head on in. And I'm gonna, here, I, I did an entire video about this. It was called the Float Rigs Show. Look at this, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna take off. Take off my leader. Okay, now you're gonna see. Why does Dave put his sinker so far? A lot of people, when they're doing this, they want their float to come, or they don't want it, they don't know any better. Their float comes down and jams and bangs on the top of their sinker. Well, I don't do that because here is what I do when I want to put it away. I go over the handle, go over the reel, and my sinker sits right there, straighten up my line, and now everything is compact and down here, not in the wind. That's the reason you put that loop in there. That's the only reason the loop is in there. But I did an entire video called the Float Rig Show and I went through A to Z with a young guy named Ian who didn't look like he was all that interested as a matter of fact. But he learned a ton that day. Because you know what he was doing with float rigs? He was doing it all wrong. He was not even setting his float and trying to drift through 20 feet of water or something. I don't know what he was doing. He might as well have been fishing with a three foot popping cork. Shame. Well, he did, he did it right. He went out with somebody and I taught him. I can teach you all you need to know about using the old float rig. Just don't bring your spitter. <laughs> <laughs>